Welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, where we play games and talk game design. Yeah, we are. We're back with more Firewatch, because you guys voted for it. Although it was close, because we did get some votes for Life is Strange, so... But that's not out of the running yet, so... Yeah, I guess we haven't really decided a formal system for uh, what stays in the voting or not, because we do choose some really good games. Um, and sometimes early on, it's like, oh, well... Just because something like Life was Strange was on earlier, and if it didn't get the most votes, I don't want it to, like, fall out of the running. So maybe if you guys vote for it, maybe, like, the runner-up stays in the voting? Does that sound like a good system? I think that works, especially because we want to play all of the games that we put in the voting system. I know, right? Well, yeah, because <laughs> each... I don't know if we've ever specified this on the show before, but uh, each one of the games in the voting is one that each of the players has requested or it's something that you guys have requested. So so last we left off on Firewatch, we were looking for those teens, the ones that uh, cut the wire, presumably. And um, presumably broke into our tower. Yes, so this is the first clue we found Allegedly. since then. Allegedly. <laughs> There's an abandoned pack out here. And it's not one of the teens? No, it looks like it was lost a long time ago. Well, you could always pilfer it for supplies. Don't mind if Swipe. I do. Swipe. Punch it. Ryan Goodwin. Ryan oh. Goodwin's backpack. I guess it said it right in the... Uh, Ooh, got some rope. Can always use rope. Oh. I just took a picture of myself. Nice. Ooh, that's well, going to be useful. I flush with ropes now. That pack was full of them. In decent condition, too. That's lucky. I mean, there's, there's enough rope here that I could just leave them hooked up, I think. Oh, get this. This uh, pack came with one of those cardboard single-use cameras. With pictures left? Yeah, he only used three or four. Neato. Thank you, Brian Goodwin. <laughs> wait, wait, who? The bag had the name Brian Goodwin sewn into the top. Huh. Wow. Do you know him? Yeah, I just haven't heard that name in a few years. Was he a ranger or something? Oh, no, no. He was stationed in Two Forks, near Lookout, with his dad, Ned, three summers ago. Great kid. You can bring children out here? Mm, no. You know, I'm not a stickler for rules. They took off halfway through the summer. Uh, nope. <laughs> you guys keep in touch, you and the Goodwin kid? Nah, they took off pretty unceremoniously. Plus, <laughs> what's a 40-year-old woman going to do with a teenage pen pal? Hmm, huh. good point. Anyway, so it goes. Have uh, fun with that camera. Try not to snap anything that would scar a photodome employee. <laughs> I don't know. I got a lot of hiking to do. I might get bored. Well, I'm bored as rocks, so I'll keep you company while you find those girls, huh? So we got a comment on uh, one of the earlier episodes talking about how that candy bar that we found in here, uh -huh. uh, had we talked to Delilah about it, we would have found out that the candy bar was like four years old. Oh. Tasty. Oh, well, we ate it anyway. What are the notes and stuff? Uh, let's uh, find out after this. Someone found a fossil and put it in a cash box. Could be the same person who left that antler. This is what I was thinking. Maybe they're leaving me an entire creature piece by piece. <laughs> Smell like a raptor claw. They make the dialogue when it's so mundane, like, oh, I'm telling you about this claw that maybe I wouldn't normally tell you about. They make it fun by being, like, sassy about it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that's actually a pretty clever choice on their end because then you don't know, know what's going to be, you know, super important or not, you know. Um, so I think it's important to mix in that mundane talk. Dave, guess who's going out with Debbie next week? No, huh? not that shit heal Steve. It's your man, Ron. I went up to check on the new guy at Two Forks and heard him talking to himself more than usual for a LOs. So no I think <laughs> uh, that makes sense. So I figured I'd stay away. Remember when you saw Chimney Rock having himself in, hey, having himself in that havoc. Ooh. I'm guessing he jerking it. Uh, I'm starting to think the Forest Service only picks the deranged and perverted. <laughs> Except for us, of course. We're the creme de la creme. Creme de la creme. Creme de la creme. Let's toast to Deb at the spot, Rob. Is that is Deb the lady you're talking to? No, that's Delilah. 
Yeah. Okay, never mind. Another Ooh, D name. Should I report this? Yeah. Hey, who are see what she says. Ron and Dave, they're leaving notes for each other in the boxes. Is there any chance one of them was that guy I saw in the canyon? You know, the guy with the flashlight? No, they're both rangers. They're not out here this season. I didn't really know him that well, but I always assumed the only thing Ron cared about was chasing tail and getting loaded. It's somehow comforting to know that he was able to keep up a correspondence with someone who wasn't going to send him a topless Polaroid. <laughs> Fantastic. Ah, people are deeper than you know. Right? I don't know how to use this camera. See? Oh, there we go. Uh, well, yeah, since we're using the gamepad, yeah, there's no uh I realized that as seat. I was saying it. <laughs> I'm really curious, though, what this camera is going to be used for, because we have 18 shots, and I feel like we need to make them count. Yeah, don't waste it. But I also feel like there's going to be um, things that happen that make us hey, be like... Sorry about snapping at you earlier. Um, I thought about it, and yeah, I suppose that must have sounded kind of weird when you heard me take that other call. Plus, you're just out here in your own head. Trust me, I know how it is. So, did you break any hearts back in Colorado when you took this job? I myself have chosen to never get attached to anyone who would miss me, but <laughs> I know I'm a bit of an outlier. I don't mean that the way it sounds. I mean, I care about people, and I like companionship as much as the next person. I'm actually married. But you're here. Yeah. She's sick. And mm -hmm. I shouldn't be here, but I am. I I'm sorry, Henry. What is it? We'll get into it. Okay. Well, in the meantime, you are here and it's beautiful and escaping isn't always something bad. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Look, I got to go do a thing, but I'll have a radio. Okay, call me if you need to. In fact, I will. There we go. Hey, uh Delilah? What do you got? You found him? Uh, no, not yet. Why would there be a fence out here? Oh, because sometimes hikers go ass over tea kettle when on huh. a trail. So the forest like service has a tea big kettle. chain link fence. A chain link fence? Yeah, it looks like it surrounds a huge area. Huh, that's weird. What do you think they're keeping in? What do they not want to have get out of there? Geez, so many things. Should I just stop you now? Maybe loads of hedgehogs. Okay. Thousands even. Full percentage points of the global hedgehog population. <laughs> uh-huh. The New Zealand government is, is up in arms. Where are all the hedgehogs? Well, folks are hiding them all in Wyoming. That's where they are. Who would do that and why? Ha-ha. <laughs> that is the real mystery. Really glad I kept you in the loop. Thanks for all of the <laughs> high quality information. <laughs> okay, you okay. sasser. I'll ask what's up if I talk to someone in the next few days who I think might know. Uh, I want to report this. I don't know. Do you think those girls could be behind this fence? Mm, well, having once been an ornery young woman, the last thing I would do is climb a fence. Especially if I knew I was in trouble. I don't even know how I would get in. It's really strange that that's out there, by the way. Yeah, it's weird. I'm just wondering how the hell you're going to find these teens. I know, right? Yeah, it's we a little harder. We kind of lost the trail. Yeah, once we lose the uh, trail of beer cans. I get the feeling that they would have hit this fence and not gone over it. So that means that the only path they have yet to take would be south. <laughs> So we're gonna head south. I'm having a hell of a time getting this fucking flapjack off his ass and out to repair that wire. You want me to go back and see what I can do? No. I want this guy to have to roll his lazy ass all the way out here. It flapjack is a choice phrase, by the way. <laughs> choice. It really fits the bill in this case. From this burned section of forest, I have no idea where to go. Their trail is pretty cold at this point. Hmm, you're out by Mule Point. No one would camp out in the fireweed. Well, I want you to stay out there, as a favor to little old me. My pleasure. <sighs> okay, we know these young women are sloppy. They must have left some sort of trail. Hmm. 
Yeah, south is really the only way to go from here. Sloppy sloppy teens, where are you at? I wonder how they handled the collision in this game. Because as a QA, I know that um, QA in games, there's specific QAs that'll... Have? Never mind. He's got Alzheimer's. Oh. Like, um, dementia. Whoa. How old was she? Is she? She's alive. She's with her family in Melbourne, Australia. She's 43. Fuck. Yeah. What was it like when you guys found out? We were scared shitless. We went straight to the doctor after her first spell or whatever. They diagnosed her and we were both just very scared. Can't really tell when Julia is scared. She just gets quiet. She was very quiet. That's sad. So sad. They do a really good job, though, at um, kind of letting us choose whether how how I guess he's handled her sickness and her death. Well, she's not dead. Is she? I thought she would. I thought she no, did die. She's living with her family. He just said. I thought that was just because we were, as him pretending as if she were still alive. No, he's she's alive. Oh, what am I? She went to Australia because uh, yeah, I her parents she... are like, we can take better care of her, let us take her. I, I thought she died over there, and that's why we went out here. Nope. Mm. Wow. I'm on top of a natural bridge out he's here. He's just out here because really? he's feeling a like a arch? failure uh, of a husband. No, I mm. guess the bridge is out here. Still, I think I could jump this gap to get across the canyon. Wow, well, you're a regular evil Knievel. Oh, no, you should see the jumpsuit I'm wearing. <laughs> Well, they did give him give us the option as the player to say that she died too, which is also interesting. So that still kind of works to my point of like it. They're letting the player kind of choose how he's coping, mm -hmm. um, which is really interesting from a narrative perspective because you don't really get that in um, in you know books, right? But it totally changes the way that you would have to write this story. Um, I guess you would still probably hit the same plot points. Oh, that's that. Is this, this is back. Yep. Oh, wow. Interesting. Okay, so we've gone full circle. This is where we found the candy bar, wasn't it? Or the antlers. I think it was both. Maybe not. Um, but yeah, the, the writing on this must have been really interesting. I'm sure there are probably some plot points that always happen no matter what, mm. um, such as bumping into the, the teenagers, right? Um, yeah, I wonder... I feel like the wire cutting is a pretty big deal, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but the relationship that we're building with Delilah, I think, is the thing that's probably the most malleable. Oh, yeah. Um, which makes sense because that is the thing that's in the player's the most... In, in the player's control. Um, so, how'd you meet? Met in a bar. Mm, the birthplace of modern romance. I walked over and asked her what her major was because I thought she was a student, not a prof. Smooth. That's me. I did make the first move, though. Aw, you were brave. I was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. I like that she's asking about his relationship now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this is a good place to call it for this episode before we get any deeper. Yeah, this is mostly a talking to Delilah episode since we couldn't find these pesky teens. Yeah, though to be fair, I think most episodes are talking to Delilah episodes and this is just... That's <laughs> Everything um, else is background. Yeah. So, I guess question of the day is, what do you think they're doing with the, I guess, where in the game, as far as the writing is concerned, does the player actually have control over, um, I don't know, where do they have, um, agency. agency, like real agency, where they're actually controlling the outcome of the story. So from, so far from, like, what you've seen. You think that's a good question? Is that Maybe a we should. Question? 
Because they can't really know. I guess that's true. Well, then maybe how would you do it in a game like this? Yeah. I think that's, that's a better design discussion. Um, yeah, so how would you design a system in a game like this where, you know, you were trying to tell a story, but at the same time you want to give the player agency? So at what points do you let the player control certain elements and what do you let them control? That's good. Cool. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to vote on what you want to see next. Um, once again, we're not sure if we're going to finish Firewatch in this playthrough. Um, I think maybe because it got voted on, maybe we will just play it till the end, depending on how long it is. Yeah. Um, but either way, you'll have two other options up there to vote for. And if you have any games that you want us to play that's not in the voting system, let us know because we'll throw those in there too. Um, whether it's in the voting system or we just play it because sometimes we just deviate from the system. <laughs> well, thank you for watching, everyone. We'll see you in the next episode. Later.